microscoping. What is it? Why do it? And what sort of person do you have to be to spend hours creating these watery worlds? Today I was visiting Aquarium Gardens, a specialist aquascaping shop, to learn more. Well this is going to be interesting. This store is somewhere I've kind of wanted to come to for a while. I first heard about Aquarium Gardens whilst watching a video made by a guy called George Farmer. I can't exactly remember why I clicked on a video about aquascaping, but it intrigued me and I became quite curious about the hobby. They basically have some of the most beautiful fish tanks, but they're not just fish tanks. These guys and George, who we'll be meeting later, are on another level. They don't just keep fish, they keep underwater worlds. First thing I notice, Alex, is that they are somewhat cleaner, more beautiful, and in all ways better than what we made about a year and a half ago. When did we make our tank? Oh, about a year ago. Yeah. We set up our large fish tank because we needed a background to film some videos in front of. Of course, we didn't really know what we were doing, but very much enjoyed the process of building this tank, which has since become the centre point of our house. We took inspiration from George. We've watched George's YouTube channel for a while, and his videos kind of inspired us to make a, a, an aquascape. But like making that tank, yeah, we made it look okay and we're kind of happy with it, but it made us realize there's, a, there's levels to this hobby. At one end of the spectrum, there's people like us, keen, but far from knowledgeable. And at the other end are experts like George Farmer. I'm a full-time aquascaper and that means I make a living creating aquascapes. I've done huge aquariums, you know, public zoos, all the way down to, you know, tiny nano tanks. You're creating a, a beautiful work of art. You, you're composing, you know, hardscape, uh, wood, rocks, uh, live plants, uh, substrates, and you know, you can see for yourselves that these are works of art. There's no denying it. I remember my first kind of experience of an aquarium. My uncle had one. Uh, I remember when I was four years old, and he had neon tetras, and actually have a really close kind of connection with neon tetras now. It's still one of my favourite fish. Long story short, I overfed them and killed them all. And it kind of gave me a bit of an insight into actually you have to care for these living things and, and you know, do, do the right by them. And I think that kind of planted the seed early on that I was interested in looking after living things and aquariums and always had a quite a close connection with nature. It wasn't a surprise that, you know, in my adulthood I'd get into aquascaping. After a couple of years of, of kind of learning about basic planted tank techniques, I discovered Takashi Amano and that was uh, when the whole kind of game changed for me. He's regarded as the godfather of modern aquascaping. So he invented the nature aquarium principle, which is based on using elements of nature from outside, so rocks and wood and plants, and then putting them into the aquarium. He was hugely inspirational. He came up with this nature aquarium principle and inspired you know, count, you know, hundreds of thousands, uh, if not millions of people now across the world with aquascaping. When Amano passed away in 2015, he left behind a wealth of aquascaping knowledge, but in his footsteps are masses of people who find peace, satisfaction and joy in this growing hobby. He is largely responsible for, for who I am right now. You know, I'm an aquascaper and the reason, large reason for that is because I was so inspired by his work. Whilst young people today might not get the chance to be inspired by Takeshi Amano's work, George and others like him share their tips and advice through social media, passing the baton to the next generation. I think if, if I had to have an aquarium and it could only have fish or plants, then I'd definitely only have plants. I mean, fish are beautiful, you know, they, they, they swim around and they're, they're, they're a living entity and you feel like a connection with them because you're looking after them, you're feeding them, you're, you're maintaining their environment. So there's a special connection there. But for me, plants is just, you know, I'm, I'm really getting into house plants, I'm getting more into gardening. I just 
find the more immersed with, in plants or forests or woodland, just the more relaxed I feel. I think most people would agree that nature can help calm the mind. Sitting by a trickling stream or spending time in a forest is absolutely delightful, but there are those who live in large cities who can't so easily access those sorts of places. I love the fact that even someone with a busy job who lives in a tiny apartment with no garden could still bring a small piece of nature indoors to relax by and care for. So the actual planning and preparing and the curating of an aquascape, that appeals to, yeah, obviously the, your creative side and you, you, you get into this kind of flow state. That's, that's where the real magic happens for me, so the process. But also I do love just consuming beautiful aquascapes. You, you can choose to look at it from a kind of mindfulness point of view. So you're just literally you and you're connected to that aquascape and there's nothing else worrying you. That's, that's the ultimate. But yeah, as, a, as an aquascaper, as a hobbyist, you tend to be always wanting to improve of what you're creating uh, or created. And so just by sort of human nature, you're constantly kind of analyzing and thinking, you know, are there any problems that need to be fixed? You know, what do I need to do next? But I think it's actually important to accept everything for how it is right there and then, and then just be literally with an aquascape. And that's, that's where the real therapeutic value happens, I think. George mentioned the word therapeutic a number of times whilst we were recording with him. Now therapy is something that can mean different things to different people. For some it's medication, something administered in hospital. For others it's talking therapy, helping overcome traumas and remove barriers to a more normal life. For people like me, time outdoors is therapy. I'm an angler, I go fishing, but really the fishing is just an excuse for spending considerable periods of time sat by a lake or river watching the world go by. After filming at the aquatic store, we actually took George fishing for the first time. We caught a couple of little fish, admired them and sent them on their way, but it helped me show him what fishing does for me and millions of others. A connection to nature is something that humans require. Whilst aquascaping is far removed from angling, the reasons for doing it and the benefits that it gives us are very similar. Bye George. Learning a little bit more about George, I found out that he spent 14 years in the Royal Air Force and six months in a bomb disposal unit in Afghanistan. George's career in the military was something that he didn't feel totally comfortable with, but at the time was a necessity. Many people will suffer from depression or anxiety at some stage within their life, but if there's one thing I've learned from my experiences with this is that it can sometimes be telling you that something in your life isn't right. A few years back, my mental health got so bad that I finally quit my job and pursued my dream of becoming a full-time YouTuber, whilst for George, leaving the RAF and beginning his career in aquascaping helped him feel more fulfilled and far more aligned with the person he really was. For George, aquascaping is now a large part of his identity and it gives him a unique sense of purpose which he didn't find in his previous career. It also provides peace and focus, which can, in time, help heal the PTSD he's endured since he was hit by a roadside bomb while serving in the war. Uh, I've got five tanks. I've got two Awaze Highline tanks. There's an Awaze Highline 400 with discus. Uh, a Highline 175 for Malawi cichlids. And then I have two style lines, which is a wise kind of mid-level. Uh, an 85, uh, which is epiphyte only. So these are plants that just attach to the woods and rocks. And then I have the Awaze style line 125, which at the moment is uh, an algae experiment. Because I think it's really important, right, to, to show folk that even, you know, 
full-time aquascapers still struggle with algae. So I think if I can show that to other people, it can hopefully encourage them and you know, help them on their journey as well. I was going to say, an algae experiment, that sounds like a tank at home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you can just sort of get away with calling it an algae experiment, can't you? You, can sort of, you just neglect it and just say, yeah, it's just an algae experiment. Algae, yeah, I'm nothing. Algae. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really good at it as well. I'm much better than you at algae growth. Yeah. Aquarium Gardens, it, it, it's a great store for many reasons. You know, I'm close friends with, with the owner and the staff as well. So, you know, during the pandemic, it's actually been quite nice to come in and actually get some social interaction with other human beings. One human being we wanted to talk to was Aquarium Gardens owner, Dave, who offered to show us two of his favorite scapes. All right, yeah, so in the Aquarium Garden showroom, and uh, we've got a number of tanks here. This is one of my favorites right here, actually. Uh, it's an Aquascaper 900. This is a classic nature aquarium. This is what we call nature aquarium style. So the plants and the elements within the aquascape are all inspired by different elements of, of nature. Yeah, the whole idea of it is creating this sort of natural habitat that looks great to us, uh, but also important to the fish, and, um, and the fish are really healthy because of it. So moving around, uh, we've got 10 Aquascapes in, in total, all in like a circle here. So if we spin around to maybe this tank here, um, this is what we call diorama uh, style scape. So basically shrinking down a large landscape into a smaller box. Um, in this case, it's a tree, so three bonsai trees. It could be a mountain um, or a forest. Um, but here we've got three trees on like a hill. With people spending more time online than ever before, and the ease of getting entertainment from devices, I wondered what the future holds for aquascaping as a hobby. It's becoming a lot more kind of pronounced with the prolific use of social media, you know, Instagram, Facebook. So there's there's kind of sub almost subcultures developing in the aquascaping community. You have like, uh, you've got, got like the low-tech crowd and you've got like the high-tech crowd, you've got like the ADA fanboys, and you've got these like really interesting kind of subgroups forming. I mean, that's the great thing about the aquarium hobby. It's, it's just such a diverse and, and rich range of, of genres in it. And there's something for everyone, I would think. I like it. I never really got it so much. You know, when we were younger, we were like, fish tank's a fish tank. Well, how wrong I was. A fish tank isn't just a fish tank. It can be an opportunity to design, create, and express. Whilst I started today interested in aquascaping, I was now a total convert. Well, before we head home, uh, one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, would you come to our house and sort out our fish tank and make it look like really nice, like your one? <laughs> If you, if you promise to maintain it appropriately. Try my best. But not make it into an algae experiment. <laughs> <laughs>